a medical instrument made out of pure uranium metal. It, it is pretty radioactive, but not dangerously. I don't want any of you to get scared of, of this stuff, but here's a Geiger counter. And, uh, but it's used as a shield because its density is so high that even though it's, it itself is a little bit radioactive, it's good for shielding things that are intensely radioactive. So the, uh, <coughs> so where are we? <laughs> uh, So we need to have, uh, the, the critical mass is on the order of this big. Uh, oh, I was going to uh, tell you about this thing. I don't know if I'm going to lift it up. But this is the only material that I could afford which has the same density as uranium and plutonium and gold and all those things. Uh, and it's tungsten. Uh, tungsten has a density of 19 grams per cubic centimeter. Some of you may in schools have little pieces. You can sometimes get free little pieces of tungsten. It's really dense stuff. And what I do is have my ninth graders try to pick it up. And I don't glue it down. I do all kinds of tricks on my ninth graders. Uh, but this is not a trick. And I'll leave it up here on the table. It, it's not stuck. <laughs> but it, it's so heavy that it's hard to have a strong enough grip to be able to lift it up. Now, if you do play with it, um, don't drop it. Um, uh, this is a carpeted floor, which helps. But uh, what I tell my kids, and I'm probably exaggerating, that if you drop it on your toes, it doesn't break them, it powders them. Um, it's very, very heavy, and it's a really hard material. Uh, I don't tell my ninth graders. Shall I tell the teachers? Is that fair? I want, I want somebody to come up and try lifting it first, and then I'll tell you. If one volunteer will come up and try lifting it, I'll tell you what it weighs. It's fun. It's fun, guys. You all. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it weighs even if you don't lift it, but I want to have somebody try. He's going to make it look really easy. <laughs> There's another man in the room who's lifted this. He brought it in, he brought it in uh, from the car for me. Um, so these materials that people put together in bombs, this, this pure plutonium and uranium metal, they are heavy. And if you see, and I didn't see any of the movies, but you see people struggling carrying these things. They weigh a lot. Um, in, in a very compact package. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the overall game. The neutrons are the glue. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, you want to know that? Okay, good. You're keeping me on track. Do more of that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what do you guess? How much? I think it's more. I think when we've waited, it's 45, but under 50, but above 45 or something. I, I don't actually remember for sure, but it's under 50. Lead bricks are 27. We have a bunch of lead bricks, too, some of which I got. You guys know about the black hole up at Los Alamos? Who knows about the black hole? The, the gentleman died. What was his name? Grothes. Ed Grothis. He died, I think, within the last year, but he, for decades, got surplus materials from the lab and resold it. And I bought lots of stuff from him when I was running my own lab for a while in, in Santa Fe, and I, we bought some stuff for our school. Um, I got a lot of lead bricks from him. I got a lot of mercury from him. I got all kinds of things I probably shouldn't have. I don't have the mercury at school. Uh, I didn't get that from him. That I had to go out and go to a tungsten company and ask them to make it for me. Tungsten and bricks are hard to make because you can't, uh, it's very hard to melt it. It's one of the highest melting temperature materials there is. They use it as filaments and light bulbs because of that. And so and it's very hard to find something that will not melt, that they can pour it into as a mold to make it. So this was not made by melting. It was made by some kind of powder compression system. I don't know. It cost me 500 bucks. Wow. <sighs> I know. But I've gotten that much out of it for sure. Uh, Okay, so the main steps we're going to do now to make a bomb and the things that Los Alamos worked on they, uh, were, were you, you have to make some subcritical masses. You, if you get too much material all together, it is a bomb, and the chain reaction is going to occur, and if you want to use it as a bomb for military purposes and you want to hurt the enemy, not you, you want to wait and assemble the pieces um, when you want the thing to go off. So you have to create separate or somehow compressible pieces of either plutonium or uranium and bring them together when you want the bomb to go off. Uh, I love, I, I've got a couple of really good handouts for you I'm going to give you at the end of the period. Um, I had a really hard time finding the physics, the science of bombs. Maybe it's because it's all classified. Well, not all. 
actually, I talked to a lot of people, and people who, are, who really know how these things are made can't say anything about them because it, it is classified. So you've got to find jokers like me who think they've learned about it or maybe learned about it. Now, I'm free to say anything I want to because I never I don't have any security clearance. So some of the stuff I say may be wrong. But the two, um, and, if, and if anybody knows that, please say so. I give my kids extra credit points for mistakes I make um, or mistakes that they find in, in newspapers and books and stuff like that. Um, the two handouts, one is a contemporary, just straight, hard-nosed, quantitative description of bombs. The other one is the, my favorite, is this that I got from a, a, universe, a UNM professor uh, last week. It's typed lecture notes, and it's got all kinds of scribbles and margins and declassification marks on it. These are notes that were written up by a physicist um, of a set of six lectures given by another physicist at and here's where we are. We think we know this and this, and we think it might work to do this, maybe that, we're not sure. And so it's a wonderful, real snapshot in history before they knew it was good, they were going to succeed. A little hard to follow. They had some code stuff in here, so it's not clear what they're talking about. Um, the whole thing has also been made into a book, and I actually just got the book in the mail today, and I didn't even look at it. Uh, and it, it might be, if you use this, it might be handy to have this also, because I presume in this they've explained it or they've decoded it or other things, but this is a, an organized version of this. I'm going to give you this, and I'll give you the title. Of, I've, I've got another handout that gives you references. This and some others. I'll give you a handout that has these things on them. So this is fun because of its historical authenticity is, is why I like it. And one of the things that's in those notes are, all right, so we got fissionable material. We're going to have to have it in two pieces and then assemble it when we want the bomb to go off. And these are the notes that are in there. They had ideas like this. The, the hashed stuff is the uranium-235 or the plutonium-239. If you put all that, whatever it was, 15 or 20 kilograms together, you already have a bomb, which you don't want. So you have to assemble it when you want it to go off. So you have this slug, which you move in there. This is, I'll talk about this in a moment. This is other material. But you assemble it. Um, that was one of the sketches in those notes. Here's another sketch in those notes. You have things, two, sort of two hemispheres that you might slide like this to get the uranium, enough uranium close together. This was a, a, an implosion thing. You have pieces of a sphere, and if you squish it all this way, the pieces come together. There are infinite ways, and if you want to play games with your students, they'll come up with other ways, I'm sure. Lots and lots and lots of different ways of assembling these things. Uh, you have to assemble these things. I, I guess now I'm going to talk about the key. Let me give you an outline of the key challenges that they were facing. You've got to assemble this stuff really, really, really quickly. Uh, and then you, when it does get assembled quickly, you've got to make sure there are enough neutrons around to start the reaction. And you've got to make sure there aren't neutrons around that are going to start it before you want it to go. Those are both major technical problems. You've got to have it, the timing come out right and the number of neutrons available. Um, so you have to initiate it with a neutron source. Then you have to try to hold it together as long as you possibly can. And I'll tell you why in a moment. And then you run away, get out of the way. But uh, that wasn't part of the problem that the Los Angeles scientists were worried about. So why is it so hard and so critical? Here's the main problem. Um, I told you before that each fission process takes 10 to the minus 12 seconds. It's instantaneous. The whole